Good morning, www.andrewmarkmusic.com. Uh, it's a riff vlog on real currencies. Um, you can Google it, realcurrencies.com or realcurrencies.wordpress.com. It's a site run by Anthony Miguel's, if I'm pronouncing that uh, correctly. Hopefully I am. I first came, I ran across the site some time ago, um, made note of it and totally agreed with what he was saying. Um, he's back up and at it uh, now and he has um, a post called The Economy of the Promised Land. And this is very, very, very similar to my Four Pillars of a New Earth Commons um, and my 12-part series on the winter solstice golden rule which is basically about the question of how we should live um, let me just read its intro here uh, the economy of the promised land one reason why we have a few money lenders and landlords running the whole world with the rest of us tolling as serfs to pay their monthly dues to them is because we have no real inkling of how we would live without them and the difference is so enormous that one shies away from speaking of it for fear of being condemned as a foolish utopian. And um, yeah, this this is an uh, incredibly important um, aspect of what's going on here um, and how we got to where we are. And one of the main mechanisms of getting to where we got today was just focusing on spiritual metaphysics and religious metaphysics and throughout the last 600 years splintering that into a million different uh, speculations, uh, all of them unprovable. Um, none of them can be demonstrated to be true. You know, Islam can't demonstrate uh, their metaphysics to be true any more than a Christian or, or you know um, and what I'm suggesting is, is is this is no random accident that this these incredible schisms that have been created uh, opened up a door to the users and the worldwide Capcom PSYOP um, which is basically uh, control a civilization by the financial elites, the oligarchs. Um, how did they do it? How, how did they get to where we are now from where they were in the 1400s? Um, and they did it by not addressing the question of how we should live. And, and they got everybody obsessed with, you know, a million and one uh, speculations on metaphysics and God and spirituality and that opened up the door for them and while we're all arguing about Casper and ghosts they just came right snuck right up the middle and um, implemented a worldwide system of usury <clears throat> and um, this will end in disaster. I'm, I'm completely convinced of, of that much. How I'm, I'm not a prophet and I don't speculate on the future, but uh, just the physics of it and, and the, the way Viet currency economics works, you'd need another 10 planets, you know, in the coming centuries. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's completely unsustainable, this, this present um, uh, system. Um, now, I've said time and time again that perhaps this was all justifiable in 1700, 1800, but, you know, there's less than a billion people on the planet and seeming un and unending resources. But now we're, we're facing a situation where there's soon to be 10 billion people and um, and limited resources, you know, and and the the this cabal is in complete denial of of this you know wall that we're about to hit, and through all their programming, 
you, through ac- control of academia, control of Wall Street advertising, they have made it so that people like myself and Anthony are just viewed as crazy to suggest that there could be another way to live than the way that they have forced uh, upon humanity. And um, I think the if there's a difference between Anthony and I, it might it might be that I'm still suggesting that these oligarchs be allowed to have their system, but capping it at about two billion people, and then the other in the coming century, the other eight billion of us live within the New Earth Commons uh, confines. Uh, where usury doesn't exist. So I mean, I'm, what I'm suggesting is based on the idea of voluntarism. I don't believe that that workers or the poor or uh, anybody that's you know marginalized within civilization has the right to act violently towards the oligarchy, right? At the same time, the oligarchy doesn't have the right to act violently against us. So I'm seeking a compromise here. I'm suggesting a compromise. It's also, I think, an intelligent working of the Pareto distribution, which is, uh, according to the theory, an 80-20 split that's sort of built into the universe. And what I'm suggesting is an intelligent response or an an intelligent working of the Pareto. Instead of saying, okay, well, uh, like like people like Jordan Peterson, well, you're stuck uh, at the 80% being a loser and you just better suck it up and, and, you know, go to your meaningless job for 100 years and, and serve the oligarchy. What I'm suggesting is just an intelligent working up the Pareto, if we're stuck with it. And, uh, and, you know, there's maybe arguments that the Pareto distribution is overstated its importance, and I'm, I won't argue that. It, perhaps it is, but nevertheless, it, it's my idea sort of works with it, and it's saying, okay, it's, it's, it's placing a high value on voluntary... Uh, uh, associations. So the trick would be to make the global commons aspect of uh, or the community the if it, if it pans out to 8 billion and 2 billion is to make it so cool and functional and it would be based on arts and entertainment and bringing back the old guilds. Um, everybody would have a home um, you know there's no usury you're, you're, you're not allowed to, to practice predatory financing. It would be based on, you know, a steady state economic model, all kinds of different um, local, localized learning food production, um, uh, personal mastery, becoming, uh, uh, setting up the conditions where everybody can meet their their, uh, potential as human beings. Now, Anthony points out in, in the blog that I mentioned that there's a certain percentage of people that you cannot help. And I'm, I totally agree with that. But I believe that the percentage is so small that it's not an excuse to dismiss uh, these ideas. Um, now, perhaps we don't have a solution for the insanely pathological uh but that again, I don't see that as an excuse for not making a better system than this predatory usurious one that's destroying the earth and enslaving most people here. Um, which isn't to say that there aren't winners. Clearly, there are winners in this casino, um, and, but the winners are not even random. Uh, you know, there's a reason why the casino owners have paid football players or people that play games with a uh, balls will make more money in one year than you will make in your labor for a lifetime. And that's because they've used this uh, to manufacture the consent uh, for the for the oligarchy, for the, the world's financial uh, 
predators, you know. Um, now, I'll just finish up here by saying if this continues, you know, the current trajectory, it's most likely because there is a form of supernaturalism, uh, metaphysics, that is true. Um, but in my opinion, you won't find that within the world's religions, which are all various forms of disinformation by the archons. In other words, what I'm suggesting is that if you were to analyze what Anthony's saying, what I'm saying, through a rational lens and through a, a logical lens, there should be no reason not to implement what we're suggesting. It, it's completely consistent with, with um, the faculties of logic and reason. The, what, what the oligarchy is doing is actually irrational and illogical, you know, because it's enslaving people. And I pointed out many times that the cost of policing and the healthcare of this sick system is enormous. It's, it's staggering and it's just a complete waste. And to have most human beings on the planet wasting their life doing things that they hate uh, in the slave system uh, couldn't be more incongruent, incoherent, irrational, and illogical. So, because what Anthony is suggesting, what I'm suggesting, is actually coherent and logical and rational, there has to be an explanation of why it would, can't be implemented. And this goes to metaphysics, and this goes to the archons that rule this place. I won't get into that, my theories here. It may be an area where Anthony and I, Anthony and I disagree, because um, it's the most controversial aspect of human life. Um, are, you know, are we just dealing with, you know, complexity of the human condition or are there other actors involved? I sit squarely in the camp that there are other actors involved here. It's, a, it's incredibly complicated and um, hard to get to the truth of the matter. Um, but the Archons are real in my opinion. Anyway, uh, check out realcurrencies.com. Um, check out, I'll link in, in the video his site. Uh, check out uh, My Four Pillars of a New Earth Commons, my 12 part series on the Winter Solstice Golden Rule. And um, it, it's the one fight worth having. You know, uh, fighting about you know, the truth of some higher dimension is not worth fighting, you know, I'll say like the jihadis are willing to die for this, you know, and throughout history, Christians have chopped off the heads of people that disagree with them, and so on endlessly, you know, this endless horrific uh, warring over uh, supernaturalism is not the right way to go about this. We, we're much better off focusing on the question of how we should live, you know. And, and Anthony's got it right. He's got, from the Christian perspective, he's got it right about how Christians should be living, you know. And I, I and my ideas are completely consistent with that too. Anyway, www.andrewmartinmusic.com um, that's Riff Vlog on Real Currencies. Peace out. Peace out.